Good evening, and welcome all of you here to St Andrews for this special watch night service. We will move from Christmas Eve into Christmas Day, and I'm glad that you folks have come here to be part of it. Some of you will have travelled from afar, uh, coming back to be with family over the festive season. Turn to somebody near you, maybe behind you or in front of you. Let's take 30 seconds to see who has come furthest to be here tonight. So go on, some research. Where has everyone come from? Okay, I see Glasgow, I see Edinburgh, um, I see Luton, Dunstable, sorry, Dunstable. Anybody further away than Dunstable? Where is Dunstable, Alfie? Good point. <laughs> Somewhere far down south. Anybody come further than the kind of north of London direction? Hampshire definitely wins on the south coast. Well, friends, wherever you've come from and why ever you've come, you are welcome. And tonight we will celebrate Christmas. We'll stand together and sing then our first carol. Those carols are on your sheet and will be on the screen on Christmas night. All Christians sing to hear the news the angels bring. We stand as we worship. Friends, wonderful singing for the first carol. I can only imagine how it's going to be by the end of the service. Shall we bow our heads and together shall we pray? In the darkness we wait for Christmas. Some of us happy, some sad. In the darkness we wait for Christmas. Some of us believers, some not sure. In the darkness we wait for Christmas. Some of us 
have houses full of presents. Some of us are struggling to get by. In the darkness, we wait for Christmas. We cannot see each other's faces right now, and we do not know each other's pains and joys. In the darkness, we wait for Christmas. We wait for a baby who is about to be born. In the darkness, we wait for Christmas. We wait and we wonder. We hope. For love. In the darkness, we wait for Christmas. We wait for Jesus to bring light to our world. In the darkness, we wait for Christmas. And God waits with us, for God is here in this place. In the darkness, we wait for Christmas to hear the story of God's love. In the darkness, the choice is ours. Will we stay in the darkness or will we come into the light? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I've welcomed all of you here present tonight. I want to welcome also those of us, those who are joining us online, elsewhere in the town, or maybe around the country or further beyond. You're all welcome, and we hope you'll feel part of it, even though you may be distant from us. We sing again the second of our carols. It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old.
Hello. I'm Tam. The angel Tam. Actually, Tam's not my name. It's Gabriel, but from where I'm from, you wouldn't last long with a name like Gabriel. So I go by the name Tam. Hello. I'm Tam, the angel. No easy being an angel nowadays. See, my job is to bring messages from God. And now folk aren't so keen on listening to messages from God. No easy being an angel nowadays. Wasn't always that way. Long, long time ago, God said to me, Oh, Tam. Well, Gabriel, but you know. Oh, Tam, I've got an important job for you, he said. What's that, I asked. He said to me, I want you to go to the earth. There's a man there, Joseph, espoused to a virgin called Mary. I said, Oh, God, I'm going to speak like I can understand. I mean, what does espoused to a virgin named Mary mean? God gave me one of his looks and said, Tam, just go and tell Mary and Joseph they're going to have a wane and it's coming soon. Espoused means they're going to get married. Well, I went in search of this Mary, Virgin Mary and this Joseph, searched the world over for them. Looked in Montrose, first of all. Struggled to find three wise men. <laughs> so I knew it couldn't be there. Went to Dundee. Struggled even harder to find a virgin. <laughs> Never mind one called Mary. And then I found them. A wee place called Nazareth. Kind of like this town, our bro, with more shops in the high street. <laughs> Poor Mary nearly died when I appeared to her out of nowhere. I said to her, Mary doll, I've got some good news for you and some bad news. The good news is you're going to have a wedding soon. The bad news is it's not going to be the white wedding you had in mind. And by the way, you're going to have a wee lad. I'm going to call him Jesus. Poor Mary was flabbergasted, shattered with the news. She tried to tell me she was as pure as the driven snow and that no man had as much as kissed her. How dare I cast aspersions on her and her good name? You can, Mary. She was a fiery woman, she was. I said, Mary doll, this is no ordinary baby you're going to have. It's a special baby. God himself is in charge. I'll square everything away with Joseph. It will be fine. Well, I said to Joseph what was going to happen. He lost the plot. Gave me a whole list of suspects who he said had always fancied Mary. And he was wanting to dump her right there and then especially when he heard about the baby. In the end, I talked them both round, and they set off to Bethlehem, as was the plan. They'd gone to Bethlehem because that's where Joseph's relatives were from. The place was packed. Joseph had forgot to book online. There was nowhere, nowhere for them. They ended up in a stable for the night, sleeping with the, the cows and the sheep. Mary was that tired, she didn't care by then. And then it happened. We Jesus was born that night in that same stable. And before you knew it, there were shepherds there, followed by wise men, kings, a whole queue of folks waiting at the door to get a look at this wee baby who God said had come to be the savior of the world. And he came. 
world's never been the same since. This wee baby, Jesus, changed everything. Now, it's no easy being an angel nowadays because no one really wants to hear messages from God. But if you're listening, then the same baby can change your world tonight. From the ridiculous to the sublime, the choir. Time for us all to sing again, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see you lie. But stand again and sing, O little town.
the Bible reading, as always, at this service is the first part of John's Gospel, chapter 1 and from the first verse. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. From the very beginning, the Word was with God. Through Him, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without Him. The Word was the source of life. And this life brought light to people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. God sent His messenger, a man named John, who came to tell people about the light so that all should hear the message and believe. He himself was not the light. He came to tell about the light. This was the real light. The light that comes into the world and shines on all people. The Word was in the world. And though God made the world through him, yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believed in him. So he gave them the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means, that is, by being born as the children of a human father. God himself was their father. The Word became a human being and full of grace and truth lived among us. We saw his glory the glory which he received as the Father's only Son. John spoke about him. He cried out, This is the one I was talking about when I said, He comes after me, but he is greater than I am, because he existed before I was born. Out of the fullness of his grace, he has blessed us all, giving us one blessing after another. God gave the law through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only Son, who is the same as God, and is at the Father's side. He has made him known. Amen. And may God bless to us the reading of his word. Friends, I wonder if you noticed on the news a couple of nights back, they were announcing the the most popular names in Scotland for this last year, going by new births registered. So, I guess, no surprise, by way of the boy's name, for the ninth year in a row, Jack is the most popular boy's name in Scotland, but for the first time ever, Olivia is the most popular girl's name. Now, I can never figure, because I don't know anyone called Olivia, but I guess I'm moving in the wrong circles nowadays. But more interesting, perhaps, than which are the most popular names is the fact that there are three times as many names in circulation now as there were when I, for example, was being registered as a newborn Seems like today you can kind of make up a name and it's okay. In days gone by, there was a sort of shorter list to choose from. So I wonder, take one minute and just imagine that you're registering the birth of a new baby. See if you can come up with a name from these letters. It's like Carol Vorderman on Countdown. You've got 30 seconds. Who can come up with a name? A new name, hitherto unheard of. Come on, turn to your neighbor, come up with a name.
Well, you can tell me yours when you're leaving afterwards. I'm going with Tazakia. I think that's got a ring to it, Tazakia. Watch this space. There'll be a Tazakia born sometime soon. Tazaki with a K. Some people like the name for the sound of the name. Other people like the name for the meaning behind it. Maybe some of you, you know the meaning that lies behind your own name. Uh, I, I'm not certain the meaning of the word Martin. I think it's something like uh, body of a god or something like that. But <laughs> Now before MD says any wise cracks, not Buddha, not Buddha. <laughs> so much for Jack and Olivia and all the other names that we might come up with. Tonight, only one name matters. Every other name kind of fades into insignificance tonight. Only one name matters tonight. It's the name above all other names, the name upon which history itself turns. They registered his birth. You shall have a son. And you will call him Emmanuel. That was his name. Emmanuel. Now maybe you know the meaning of your own name more perhaps than I do, but... Let's make absolutely clear and sure that everyone in church tonight knows the meaning of his name. Jesus, who was Emmanuel, the meaning of the name is this, God with us. You shall have a son and you shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Friends, this is Christmas. This is the meaning. This is the heart of it. This is all in the end that matters. That in Jesus, God himself, the creator of all things, was stepping into the world to be with us. To be one with us alongside us. I guess in in a moment or two, you can allow your minds to go back over this last year. Perhaps the last chapter in your life. Some of you have got much joy in the pages of that chapter. Others of you have struggled. For others of you, this year is one that you just want rid of. Move on. Even so, God is with us. And there is no moment, no place, no experience that you can have that God is not with you in. God is with us. Do you know, I think this in some ways is a love song. As we say, sang the second of our carols tonight, in the third verse, speaking about what the angels came to declare, we have this line, man at war with man, hears not because, not listening because of too much distraction and so on. Nonetheless, the angels are singing a love song. I wonder if we can be still enough tonight, even just for a few moments, that we would hear this love song. What love song would you sing to your loved one? Maybe some of you are here tonight and you're fortunate enough to have somebody you really love in life. Can you think of the song that you would sing to them? 
couple pop into my mind that I've enjoyed with the lane. What about this one? Daniel Bedingfield. If you're not the one, sloppy, ballady love song, if ever there was one. I never know what the future brings, but I know you're here with me now. It's a great love song. But you know what it strikes me about it? We could sing it to God. I know you're here with me now. Can you just sense that in the quiet and the stillness of this building tonight? I know you're here with me now. That was the promise when he came. That was the love song that God sang as Jesus came into the world. Emmanuel, God with us, God with us now. Here's another of those catchy love songs, the Backstreet Boys. And maybe this is one that God needs to sing to some of you tonight. He says, I don't care who you are, where you're from, what you did, as long as you love me. See, there's no one ruled out from God's love. There's no limits to it. The love song that he sings tonight applies and is addressed to each and every one, no matter where you've been, what you've done, no matter what your backstory is. He declares his love for you by sending Jesus into the world and asks only one thing that you would love him back. Just that. Can you find it in your hearts tonight to love him back? The one who first loved you, can you love him tonight? Emmanuel means God with us. And nothing ever, ever is going to change that. When that Emmanuel little baby had grown up, and just before his leaving this earth, he promised his friends, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. So the promise of the love song when he was born is the promise that still goes out. I am with you and always will be with you. That's all you need to know. Because when that's true, then no matter what you face in life, no matter what this next year holds, no matter what tomorrow holds, God will be there with you in it. That's the promise. I just hope and pray all of us can grab that promise for ourselves and make it real in our lives. I found this picture this week and I love it to bits. Because in this picture, everything else is stripped away. Not even an ox or an ass to clutter the scene. No band of shepherds, no angels, no wise men, no nothing. Everything else stripped away. And for a few moments now, let that be true of our Christmas that everything else is stripped away and it comes down to this. A baby was born. A baby was born. His name was Emmanuel. God is with us. Now as we go on and sing together, still the night, let that truth sink deep into your soul. Strip everything else away. Put everything else down 
lay it aside and let that truth be yours. Christmas, God is with us. Let's stand together and sing still the night. Saviour, thou art born, God with us. A happy Christmas to you all. Please turn to those around you and let's share with one another these blessings of Christmas.
That's what I'm going to do now. <laughs> well, friends, there will be time at the end of our service when you can see others. Uh, don't feel you have to see everyone tonight, uh, right now. There will be time when our service concludes. You can move one to another then. Uh, but again, let us reiterate uh, a very Merry Christmas to you all. And uh, every blessing upon you and those you love at this time. We're going to uplift our offering now, as I said at our earlier service tonight at half past six, always at Christmas time. Uh, the whole of the offering is given away, uh, and this year to two particular causes, one national and one international. First of all, we are supporting the work of Alzheimer's Scotland. Now, we ourselves here at St. Andrews in conjunction with the local branch of Alzheimer's Scotland, we run a dementia-friendly cafe once a month. It's fairly newly started, but this offering is going to Alzheimer's Scotland nationally towards the work of research into this condition. And then internationally, tonight we are supporting the work at Seamus House. Seamus House is in northern India, and it is a refuge for young children who have been trafficked. It is one of the great evils of the modern age still that we need to speak up against and fight against the trafficking of human beings, not least children. Seamus House is for rescued children, children who have been plucked out of that evil and brought to safety. And there they are loved and nurtured and given back life. So through our offering tonight, we look to support the work of Alzheimer's Scotland here at home and children in northern India who have been rescued from trafficking. If you will, you're invited now to make an offering. Thank you.
So we dedicate the offering. We offer it. We give it, hoping and praying for a change in our world. And never giving up on a picture of a world where no longer children suffer in these ways. A world where all are cared for. Yes, even those of our elderly folks. Cradle to grave, God comes for us all. We dedicate the offering. We ask him to bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, we're going to pray and then come to our final carol. So shall we bow our heads once more and shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for this season. Season we call goodwill to all. Season of peace. Season of joy. We thank you for it and pray that all of these things would abound in our world this year. And yet we are very conscious that for many, they will know little or nothing of this joy. We know our world remains divided. We know that hatred is still alive and well, causing division and brokenness and bitterness the world over. Lord, tonight, hear us as we pray for those who will know little of peace and joy this year. Those still caught up in Aleppo and those who have been bussed out, but only into a refugee camp. And those in Berlin who will have an empty seat at the table tomorrow. Lord, hear us, we pray. And hear us as we cry out for the day to come when peace will reign here and over all the earth. We ask our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, tomorrow is Christmas Day, of course, today. Uh, it's Sunday as well, so we will be worshipping as always. 11 o'clock, our service, a shorter service than normal, suitable for all the family, uh, 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. And then uh, on Wednesday at half past six, a special service for those who perhaps are struggling somewhat with the season of joy that I've spoken about. Maybe this year has been difficult. Maybe you have been bereaved during this last year. Our Wednesday service gives you an opportunity to lay out some of what you're feeling in here. Anyone can come. It's a small service. It's quiet and reflective, but it might just be what you need as we move towards the end of 2016. So it's half past six on Wednesday. All are welcome for our service of quiet reflection. And that will take us through to next weekend, Sunday, of course, the 1st of January. But on a Saturday night, uh, all age for all the family, Hogmanay party, uh, a great event in the life of our church now, beginning at eight o'clock. And all are welcome. Um, you can sign up to bring some food. And our, you can leave a message at our church office, and call in there uh, during this week and let us know you're coming and what you can bring to the party. And it will be a great way to see out this year and bring in the new year our Hogmanay party on Saturday. So friends, much to look forward to in the life of the church. And I know that will be true. I pray for you all. Uh, wonderful family times tomorrow 
and in the days that are coming. So shall we finish our service singing that great carol, O come, all ye faithful. Shall we lift up our voices with the choirs of angels, and shall we come before him and adore him, Christ the Lord, let's stand and sing. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with and remain with you and those you love this night and forevermore. Amen. Friends, go in peace, safe travels, and have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you. <laughs>